The American Red Cross has its first donor of plasma from a recovered virus patient, coronavirus patient, helped save two lives. Marissa Luzzi from Pennsylvania donated last month, less than two weeks after she had recovered from the Wuhan virus. The plasma went to two New Jersey patients on ventilators, her aunt and a 61-year-old man. Their vitals stabilized within a few days. They were both released from the hospital last week. The plasma therapy is working. And one of uh, plasma therapy's uh, great advocates uh, is Dr. Ian Lipkin. He is the director of the Center for Infection and Immunity at Columbia University. His research on using plasma drawn from recovered patients just approved for clinical trials by the FDA. Uh, and uh, it's worth noting, uh, he also uh, is a, a recovered uh, Wuhan virus uh, uh, p uh, patient. I guess you're no longer a patient. I guess you're a veteran of this pandemic is what it makes you in so many ways. Good to have you with us, doctor. Uh, plasma My works pleasure. and it's having quite an impact. We think it's working. We haven't Your seen thoughts. any adverse effects. Uh, our clinical trial is just getting going. We've got less than 20 patients thus far. So far, no problems here either. We haven't broken the code. Once we hit our numbers, we will. I anticipate it's going to be successful, but we'll see what the data show. And these 2,600 patients that have been treated with plasma, uh, especially with states uh, easing lockdown uh, reactions, they're saying that they've had absolutely no uh, issue whatsoever with it. That's not the same thing as uh, a stamp of uh, a medical approval, but it is a, a certainly a positive sign, isn't it? It is a positive sign. It's very encouraging. I predict it's going to be successful, but that's not the same thing as proving it. So that's what we're doing at Columbia, and that's how we're focused. Uh, and I think we'll have the answers in a few weeks. So uh, again, this was well, first described on your show, and you promoted it, and I'm sure you should be pleased. Anyway, well, I'm, Lou, I'm I thrilled. To Anytime that I, I excuse I me, doctor, I just wanted to finish, if I may. I, I do want to take up a couple of things here, uh, and, and one of them is uh, this. Uh, uh, we're hearing all sorts of stories about uh, folks who are working on this, uh, billionaires, uh, very bright scientists, and Nobel Prize winners among them, trying to come up with ideas and are uh, consulting with, if you will, uh, counseling. Uh, the administration. Uh, I, I just wanted to ask you if you're familiar with their work and your reaction to it. I am familiar with the work. Uh, very, very good people, complementary disciplines, uh, many of the same things that we're thinking about. There are many groups that are now working on this independently. New York has a team that's trying to get the city back, the state, same sort of issue. Uh, and um, I'm working with a team now that's trying to make sure that something like this never happens again. So there's a lot of brain power. Well, I, I want to. Well, brain power is what's required, and uh, we're, we're glad that you were uh, uh, in, in the fight, doctor. Uh, also, testing. We know that's going to be critical uh, going forward. A number of tests have been uh, uh, start, started, they're on the market. Uh, you're working on a nucleic acid uh, test. How does, how does that work? So there are two major types of tests. One of them looks at, we can't really measure virus per se. It requires biocontainment, it's complicated, time consuming. So people use nucleic acid tests, genetic material from the virus as a way of detecting it as a surrogate. Then there are the antibody tests, which have been quite checkered in their performance. Hmm. Uh, so we're trying to improve those and we're trying to find ways in which we can detect the virus directly what we're trying to do, Lou, is to find a way in which we can detect the virus itself, not just the nucleic acids, not the antibodies, but the actual virus itself. The idea would be that you would not have to do any of the complicated procedures that people have to use now, and you would do the whole thing with a cell phone chip. That's what we're working on. I'm very excited about it um, because I think it's going to work. And the other thing that's intriguing is that we have all these people who are out of work right now. Uh, we could actually put them to work, helping us do the track tracing, everything we need to do to get America back to work again. So by adding the testing, by adding well, that's the an people, interesting idea. 
you know, we could get things moving again. So just as we had MAGA, we're going to have Make America Open again. That's sort of my next project. <laughs> A noble project indeed. Uh, and we look forward to, uh, to your success in developing the test. Thank you so much, as always, Dr. Thank Ian you. Lipkin. We appreciate it. Always a pleasure. Good bye to bye. see you. Thank you. Take care.